So now that we have explored the gradient vector, we are officially ready to define the directional derivative. So as we get started, I want you to recall that the partial derivatives give us the rate of change of the function f in the x, y, or z directions. Now, the directional derivative is going to provide us with the rate of change of the function in any direction. So, this is awesome. Let's look at how are we going to compute this. So, here's our official definition. And now keep in mind that the directional derivative is a weighted average of the partial derivatives at some point where the weights are the components of a unit vector. So here is the directional derivative in R2. So we want to let f be differentiable at some ordered pair a, b, where a and b are our scalar values, and we're going to let vector u be a unit vector in the xy plane. So the directional derivative of a function f at some point a, b in the direction of vector u is defined as follows. So we define this with a capital D sub vector u of the function f at the point a, b. And the directional derivative, again, since it's the weighted average of the partial derivatives at a point where the weights are the components of the unit vector, it's a linear combination of the gradient and our unit vector. So what vector operation provides us with a linear combination? The dot product. So we define the directional derivative as the dot product of the gradient vector at some point a, b with the unit vector. So let's expand this out. So we can think about this as being equal to, again, the gradient vector. So that's the vector whose components are the partial derivatives at that point. So if we're in R2, we have the partial derivative of the function f with respect to x at the point a, b, and the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point a, b. And this is dotted with the unit vector. So here we have the components u sub 1 and u sub 2. Now to really see that linear combination or that weighted average, we need to perform the dot product. So Performing the dot product, we're left here with the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point a, b, multiplied by u sub 1, that's your weight, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point a, b, multiplied by u sub 2. So there you have it. This is the formula that we use to find the directional derivative. So this is the rate at which a function is changing in the direction of vector u, our unit vector. So we can find the slope in any direction. Woohoo! Now this is only the definition in R2. Let's see how this changes in R3. So here we go. The directional derivative in space. So the directional derivative of a function f in the direction of the unit vector, vector u, any unit vector our little hearts desire, at some point a, b, c, where again a, b, and c are scalar values, the directional derivative is defined as follows. So again we have capital D for the directional derivative, sub vector u for our unit vector of the function f at the ordered triplet a, b, c. And now again, we know that this is a weighted average of the partial derivatives at the point where the weights are the components of our unit vector. So again, we define this as the dot product of the gradient vector at the ordered triplet a, b, c dotted with the unit vector. So again, let's expand this out. So we have the gradient vector. So we have the components where we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at that point ABC, 
we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point a, b, c, and we have the partial derivative of the function with respect to z at the point a, b, c. And again, this is dotted with the components of the unit vector. So u sub 1, u sub 2, u sub 3. And computing the dot product, we are left with that weighted average or that linear combination. We have the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the ordered triplet a, b, c, multiplied by u sub 1, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the ordered triplet a, b, c, multiplied by u sub 2, plus the partial derivative of the function with respect to z at the ordered triplet a, b, c, multiplied by u sub 3. So the same thing that we saw in R2, except in space, we have that third component, our z component. So this is the directional derivative, the formula that we'll use to compute the directional derivative in space. And again, this is allowing us to find the rate at which a surface is changing in any direction. So now that we have seen these definitions, let's go ahead and put this into practice and look at some examples.